This will be our first example of integration by parts. It's the example we started the introduction with, and now we'll actually go through and use the integration by parts formula to evaluate this integral. So once again, we're going to divide this into two pieces, and I'm labeling the first half u and the second half dv. So if you remember the formula, we had we had the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So when you start an integration by parts problem, your first goal is going to be to figure out how to rewrite the integral you're given in terms of u and dv. And the important piece to recognize is that your integral that you're given has to equal u times dv. With u substitution, we saw all sorts of arrangements where we had things like the sine of u or u squared or 1 over u. With integration by parts, it's much more structured that when we design our substitution, the integral has to equal exactly u times dv. And it's easy to get tripped up in a few examples if you don't recognize that. But just keep that in mind that it always has to be exactly u times dv. So however we define u and dv, the product of them has to equal this integral that we're working on. So in our case, we've decided to make u equal to x and dv equal to the remainder. A few notes here. First of all, the dx is always going to be part of dv. That's always going to be the case. The other question, which goes with u and which goes with dv, the x or the sine of x, we're going to leave that aside for just a moment and we'll do the example this way. And once we've done the example and we've gotten the answer, I'll come back and address that and see what happens if we pick the other order. What if we made sine of x go with u and x dx be dv? So we'll see how that works. But for now, let's see the process with u and dv the way we've picked them. To keep track of things, I like to write over here on the side the setup. We have u equals x. And then we're going to find du, because notice we need that in our formula. We already have u, and then we also need to calculate v based on dv. So we'll keep track of u is x, and then over here I'm going to write dv equals sine of x dx, and then we'll need to find v. So I kind of set up this grid every time. And it's nice to have this systematic process that you can follow with each problem so that you don't get lost in the details. As long as you do these problems the same way every time, it kind of helps to have this approach so that you know where you're going. Okay, so we know u and we know dv, and we need to find du and v. Now, finding du is something we're already familiar with. It's the same approach we use with u substitution which is why it's nice to start with u substitution and then this follows from it. So if you remember, the differential du is going to be the derivative of u times dx. Now of course the derivative of u with respect to x is one, so du will just be dx. And knowing that, how do you think we're gonna find v? It's gonna be the same process in reverse. If we know u, we can find its differential by differentiating it. So in the same way, if we know dv, we can reverse the process to find v by integrating. So we can integrate the sine of x dx, and you should recognize that that's the negative cosine function. Right? So when you find the differential, when you go from u to du, you're going to differentiate. When you go from dv to v, you're going to reverse the process and integrate. And again, once you do one or two of these problems, the rest of them all follow the exact same process. You select your u and dv, you find the remaining two pieces, v and du, and now we're ready to substitute everything into this formula. So the left-hand side is just the integral we started with. On the right-hand side, we just substitute every piece in. And this might seem kind of reminiscent of the product rule back in Calc 1, where once we find all the pieces we're using, we drop them in to the formula. So we have u times v. Remember, u is just x. 
v is the negative cosine of x minus the integral of v, so that would be negative cosine of x. So I'll switch this minus to a plus and make that plus the integral of cosine x times du, which is just dx. So just to make this really clear, we've got u dv v and du. And notice that the negative sign here turned into a positive because v was negative cosine of x. So again, once you do this once or twice, the process is very consistent from one to the next. But once we have it written in this form, the important piece is that we've changed from an integral we didn't know how to handle, the integral of x times cosine of x, and now we have to deal with an integral that we do know how to handle. So through the use of this formula, the hard integral got replaced with something involving an easier integral, one that we can do directly. And so we're pretty much done. We just have that one step to do. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative x cosine of x. And then remember that the integral of the cosine function is the sine function. So we have plus sine of x plus c. And there's your answer. Now you can go back and check by differentiating and make sure that the derivative of this is x times sine of x. But if you do that, you should find that that's true. So I would recommend that you try that just to double check and make sure that everything worked out okay. So there's your first example of integration by parts where we select u and dv. From that, we find du and v, their counterparts, and then we plug everything into this formula. So it's important to memorize that formula, but again, as you do a few of these problems, you'll kind of memorize it naturally just by using it over and over again. So now, before we wrap this up, let me ask the question, how do we know to pick u and dv in this order? If you remember, we're starting with a product of two functions. And so really there's two options. And the, the nice thing is there's only two options. We could have x be u and sine of x be dv, or the other way around. So we really have two possibilities to worry about. So in theory, if you don't know which way to go, you could always try both. And worst case scenario, you just have to do the problem twice. So that's doable. But let's see what happens if I pick them in the other order. So let's try it, the same example, where we select u to be sine of x and dv to be x dx. Remember, the dx always goes with dv no matter what. From there, we can find du pretty easily. That's cosine of x dx. So far, so good. And then for v, we want to integrate x, which would give us 1 half x squared. Notice I'm leaving off the plus c here. The idea is that plus c could be anything, so we make it simple by making it zero. So I'm not going to do something like 1 half x squared plus c because it's unnecessary. Okay, if we try this with the formula, remember that's integral of u times dv equals uv minus the integral of v times du. If we plug everything in, u times v is going to be the sine of x times 1 half x squared. So I'll write that as 1 half x squared sine of x. So far so good. Minus the integral of v times du. So that would be 1 half x squared cosine of x dx. Be careful with your dx's. <clears throat> Make sure dv and du both have a dx that go with them. Now what's the problem here? Why, why did we not choose to do this the first time? Well, if you look closely, this integral here hasn't gotten simpler. In fact, it's gotten more complicated. We went from something like x times sine of x to x squared times cosine of x. And if we tried this again, it would get even worse. So by picking 
x to be dv, v got more complicated because we integrated it. Versus in the first example, when we picked x to be u, we found du from that, and so things got simpler because we differentiated an x. The other half of the problem, the sine function, no matter where we put it, it sort of cycles through trig functions, whether you integrate or differentiate. So if we made sine of x be u, du involves the cosine function. If we made sine of x be v, or dv rather, then v involves the cosine function. Right, so we're going to talk in a second about how to select one or the other. But the general approach is, if integration by parts is the method you should be using on a particular problem, one of the arrangements will make the problem simpler when you apply the integration by parts formula, and the other will make it more complicated. So when we apply this formula to this one with the arrangement we selected, things got more complicated. When we did it the first time with the other arrangement, things got simpler and it turned into an integral we could actually do. So worst case scenario, you just have to try both approaches but this one is not the way to go because this got more complicated. So I'll show you in another video how to select the two, kind of an approach that tends to work. But if you're ever totally stuck and can't remember what to do, just try one arrangement. And if you're wrong, you can just go back and do it with the other one.